nature's amazing. Um, wonderful. A lot cheaper too. I mean, you still have to pay to go to national parks, which kind of suck. Yeah, but, um, it's like what I already paid pay for them, right? Like that's part of my taxes is the upkeep of national parks, and then you got to pay when you go in. It's the same thing we find with public record requests. You know, we already bought all the paper and the ink and the photocopier and the CDs and you know. But yeah, right. when we go to get it, we still got to pay more, you know? <laughs> yeah. Make, makes no sense to me, but whatever. So, yeah. So I understand your frustration with the government and I could see the little things like that. Like that's a perfect example. The government claiming we own this and therefore you have to pay us, even though we pay the government to maintain it. So what got you into auditing? Um, a gentleman by the name of Jeff Gray and um, an incident by the name of uh, the Dozier School for Boys uh, where state employees uh, killed and raped, murdered 80 young boys uh, over the course of numerous years. So logically, when you think about situations and you have a situation where there's a state run institution uh, that was overseen by, you know, these hardworking state employees. What was and, the name of that institution again? Uh, Dozier, D-O-Z-I-E-R, Dozier School for Boys. It was in uh, Mariana, Florida. Um, and you just Google that and you'll, you'll have more than enough information than you'll ever need on it. It's a disgusting time, I think. But uh, when you realize that this place was ran by you know, state employees that we're supposed to trust and are hardworking. And then you realize that they were audited by other state employees, right? Because it's a juvenile facility and, you know, other state employees come there to see the conditions and, and the, you know, see what's going on and, and that kind of stuff. Because that's the checks and balances that everybody raves about that they tell me, I don't need to go out and audit. We've got checks and balances already. So when you realize that that also failed, and all these young boys died, uh, then the only logical conclusion that you could be left with is that the state is overwhelmed and it needs the citizens to now come out and help watch over what they're doing because they, they involved, can't seem to be able to. Were you involved in uncovering anything there or was that story just so egregious that it inspired you to investigate the government more? It, it was just so egregious. I didn't, it, it was discovered, you know, I think a, a while back, but um, it, it um, the fact that this, you know, happened was allowed to happen because this isn't something that, you know, it wasn't $50 that accidentally slipped out of your pocket on the way to deposit the, the funds. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. You know, there's multiple guards here at this facility. There's teachers, there's administrators. And all of a sudden, you know, oh, yeah, where's that boy at? Oh, who knows? Nobody knows. You know, it's a secure facility. Nobody knows where this boy is. And that to happen 80 different times. I mean, wow. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is on par with one of the worst serial killers in America. And right. She, and I hadn't heard of this case. I, I'm curious if the chat had heard of this case. Um, if you had, please say something. If you hadn't, say something. Because I just, that's egregious. You're saying 80 young boys died. And I don't know, um, 2011, I would have been a junior in high school. I don't remember this story being national news that was repetitive for months, like many school shootings or other egregious crimes are no no absolutely not and and again no one was ever prosecuted for this crime so i mean so not only did it show me that the state needs help watching over its employees because they're obviously taxed and, and you know they don't have enough people enough manpower to do a good job you know killing and you know losing 80 kids not a good job right so right. if you don't have enough manpower to do a good job, then as a citizen, I feel it's a civic duty for me to step up and help to make sure that our employees, uh, the states, and, and by extension, uh, the constituting members of each state, which would be us, we're all body or, you know, members of the body politic, body corporate. So as members, 
uh, it's our duty to to help out. 